Lucian, and welcome uh, to everybody, everybody all over the United States of these Americas and uh, our international comrades and friends. Uh, hello, hope everybody's doing great, staying safe and strong. We got COVID is out of control in the United States, sadly, the highest death rate ever for the last two or three days. Good morning, Rosanna. Good morning. Good morning. How yes, are you guys COVID doing is out there in LA, huh? Well, we're you know we're in one of the highest. Uh, we're in the hub of this COVID. Uh, what's what's really surprising to me is that I've heard several several reports that uh, about forty percent are in nursing homes, mm. and that's that's alarming and I don't know this heart. What is that? Uh, it's just really, you know, surprising, and I, I, I just feel for families who have their loved ones in there, and mm -hmm. knowing the dangers that they pose. It's, you know, it's. I know, I know. When my mother was in the nursing home briefly, uh, before they sent her home, you know, the doctor would come in, and the flu came in, and they were, they were just like, threw up their hands. They didn't. It was like, you know. You just can't do anything about it. Uh, it's a it's a packed, difficult situation. But the antidote, the uh, what you might call it, is coming. The uh, vaccine in just a few weeks is a new RN. What's the the uh, formula for the uh, genetic code that they uh, RNA RN DNA RNA? They they changed the 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 code of the and developed a new vaccine and supposed to be 95%. Uh, and the people in uh, North and South Dakota need it. Uh, Anita, they need it because they say that's the epicenter of the world crisis now. Wow, yeah. The, it's really hit those Northern states hard where everyone, every, it's so cold outside that people in order to talk to each other have to be inside. And they're just, um, you know, real. And I think there's a lot of, um, uh, deniers. Also, West Texas, for some reason, is is as purple or or you know as 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 awful as uh, other places in the north. Even though it's warm down there, that's for some reason those counties are are really bad down there in West Texas. You know, Michael, I see some people in New York. They're dining outside, sitting outside in this cold weather, drinking beer. Oh my goodness, I can't believe it. You know, I if I were to drink something cold. But it was cold outside, I would get the shivers, you know. I, I thought it was nuts walking home yesterday. There was people dining outside and there were heaters. Some of them, some of the mm. restaurants had heaters, you know, those outdoor like lamps, I guess mm. they call them. But they were yeah. sitting outside, some of them, right next to clinics. So people are lined up, you know, going around the building. They could have COVID. They're going to get tested and oh. people are dining outside as oh if my nothing's God. happening. So it's really, it's, it's interesting. You see all the perspectives. You, know, you don't hear them because you don't hear them talking about it but you see it with your own eyes people who don't really care they're indifferent and people who are trying to get tested so they can you know get out of town go home for the holidays whatever you know Scott, when i was coming up my father would uh, if he if he would see an open window you know while it was fall or winter or spring he would throw a fit he'd close the goddamn windows you're heating up the outdoors and i'm paying for it but I think people are, also just tired. Up, huh? people are also just tired of this like um i think even even some people who you know complied with the the mass mandates at the beginning are just worn down and that is um better tired than dead well sure i'm, I'm not saying people shouldn't wear masks but um the the failure to address this thing the failure to provide systems of support that um, can keep people home from work um, without plunging them into poverty. The failure to develop a comprehensive medical strategy, the failure on PP, uh, the fact that this crisis is now ground on for almost a year. Um, it's, it's, it, take, it takes effort to, to modify your life in order to, you know, to be safe in this time. And I think people are I think it's it's so some something. some dare call it freedom, Scott. It's freedom. Right? Doing, well, freedom. doing my doing my freedom, thing. I ain't freedom. putting on no mask. I don't. I don't need you know. That's tyranny. Eight thousand people dead for freedom. <laughs> oh my goodness! It's craziness. 
absolute craziness. But your homeboy is now the president elect, Scott. You must be really happy. Uh, Joe Biden. Joe Biden is oh, president I didn't hear elect. That. <laughs> and um, you know he's got all these new people in the cabinet, and uh, he's called for a hundred days of mask wearing, which I think is a good thing, by the way. Um, that's one thing I will uh, support. And and uh, Anita, what do you think about? Uh, you happy with that cabinet that he's put together? Oh. I think it's one of it's the cabinet of Joe Biden that he he doesn't want to appear and he isn't a, a socialist. We can't expect him to to be the pick the people that we would want him to pick. I think mm -hmm. um, there was some talk about Bernie Sanders wanting to be a uh, secretary of labor. And I don't blame him for not wanting to be in a in a Senate run by Mitch McConnell. But if he's taken out of the Senate, that's just like one more um vulnerable spot. I think we need all of the progressive people that we can to stay in the Senate and uh, and give us some leadership going forward in that body. So um, so I think I, I, I'm okay with I'm not I'm not surprised or uh, you know concerned uh, that much. I, I think we I, I know the Republicans are going to try to um, put the kibosh on every single one or at least one they're going to go after and apparently it's this woman who has insulted republicans on twitter because you know how um how much decorum republicans usually have on twitter so she was that's the nominee hurt, for the office hurt, of management and budget right yeah. she hurts hurt some feelings apparently so uh they're they're a little miffed but i i thought that well, vermont was a socialist republic so if 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 uh it's a socialist state uh, rosanna so if Bernie goes into the into the labor department, I'm sure he's got you know one of his ace boom combs that he'll put back in place, and, and it'll be it'll be okay. It'll be it'll be all right. But uh, Rosanna, we still haven't gotten any stimulus package, and the food lines are long. And I, I and, think that should be I think that's the focus. That should be our focus. Not the, the cabinet nominees, because we don't have any control over that. Mm. But our focus needs to be in the people, the power of the people. It's the people who, who will make the change. So, you know, cabinet or whoever's in the cabinet isn't going to bring the fundamental change that we really need. And it's the unity of the people to press for a stimulus package, ASAP, you know, and, and I mean, uh, if you do it right, if you study some of the other countries that, that have done, they immediately shut down, but they didn't just shut down and told everybody to stay home. They provided food for them. They provided a uh, salary so that there was no this, this uneasiness of, you know, I've got to get out because I, you know, how am I going to make ends meet? Uh, they, they didn't, um, you know, they provided all the necessary uh, things to keep people home and keep people, people's anxiety to, uh, you know, enough so that they can tolerate being home for so long. If we had done that, you know, months ago, we wouldn't be in this, in this situation that we're in. And I think that's where our focus needs to be. The mm -hmm. cabinet isn't going to bring the change. It's our building that unity, you know, among all of these social movements to press forward and get that stimulus package going and get, you know, everybody back to, you know, actually not even back to normal because back to normal was, there was still a lot of suffering. Let's elevate it, but it's through the people, the people, we have to have a lot of faith in the people and push forward in that, in that respect. Change comes from the ground up. But Scott, let me ask you something. Is it even a good idea for less progressive people to participate in capitalist cabinets? I'm, I'm thinking about one of your favorite countries, France, during the Mitterrand uh, presidency. And when the Communist Party went into their government, oh my goodness, they got blamed for every neoliberal concession that, that the Mitterrand government made in the next election time, they got their butt whooped. Mm -hmm. They got their butt whooped <laughs> and they never recovered from it. And I mean, that wasn't the only, um, sort of big phase in there. I mean, they were um, before, uh, up until, from World War II up until the mid sixties, um, the communist party was 
um, certainly the largest left party and at some points even the, the largest party in the country. Um, and yeah, you know, with the, the thing in the Mitterrand government, it was, it was poorly timed. Uh, there, was, there was a kind of trap because that was when um, the, uh, there was a lot of pressure on the steel industry to, you know, downsize, lay off, all of that. And um, the, the Communist Party found itself trying, you know, in the government, trying to fight that. And when we say in the government, we say uh, in France, that means having basically um, cabinet members because they're the always right. mm -hmm. um, But so, uh, yeah, the, a lot of these, the, the Mitterrand government swung from a, a, a pretty strong pro-worker uh, position to, you know, to a much worse one. Um, and yeah, the party caught the flack for that. So is that an argument never to participate? Uh, I don't think so. Uh, but it's also, you know, there are risks and, and it's right to point out that, you know, our goal isn't to get a few communists into the cabinet or get a few communists into Congress or whatever. Our goal is to transform society. And that happens like Rosanna says, through mm. the unity of the people and the, the, the mass uprising and movement of the people. Michael, I was there in Paris in 1983. Uh, at, uh, it was right during the time when the party was in the government. And we went to a Congress of the French Communist Youth. And, you know, we were all excited. We were in, you know, Gay Paris. And, and we were eating those long things and uh, bread and cheese mm -hmm. in the morning. After a week of that, I got a little bit tired. Mm -hmm. um, but Michael, it's not always the case that it's a bad thing. I mean, what's going on in Spain? Aren't the communists in the in the government there? And yeah. aren't they are they prospering or are they what's going on? You, in you some ways, yes. Um, and in some ways, no. Just because, you know, when you are when communists are in a coalition government, they do have to make, you know, concessions, which Lenin wouldn't disagree with. Lenin wrote in left wing communism and infantile disorder that it is, you know, necessary to make uh, certain um, compromises on the road to revolution. Mm. But in terms of what's happened thus far, uh, since December of last year, they were able to um, socialize the hospitals. Uh, they've handled COVID really well. And I think after Italy, they were the hardest hit. Uh, they were almost like the New York of Europe in many ways um, at the height of right. the pandemic. Um, but I agree, uh, you know, again, with, you know, Scott and Rosanna, we should never underestimate um, the working class. I think, you know, there's people who says, oh, you can't push Biden. Oh, you can't, you know, look at his cabinet, you know. I'm, I'm thinking back to LBJ. That was before my time. But LBJ, he was a Ku Klux Klan member when he was younger. He was a Texas boy, you know, grew up and had the, the civil rights movement not been right there in his face the whole time. I don't think he would have ever signed the Civil Rights Act. And so we should never just, you know, give up before it starts. You know, he has, uh, Biden hasn't even been um, inaugurated yet. And so why give up now and why give up on the working class and underestimate? Look what's happening in India. You mentioned Spain. Look what's happening in India. How can you underestimate the working class? They have a guy who's probably worse than Trump, Modi. You know, he's shooting Muslims there in the street. So there are dire circumstances, right? And, you know, we, we've always said, you know, march to the ballot box and back to the streets. The struggle doesn't end there. And we have to keep that in mind. And that's a, that's a great comparison, India, because um, in, in one of the states, Kerala, uh, the uh, Communist Party of India Marxist um, ha is, it has plays a very strong role in the parliament um, at the, the level of that state and has been able to make um, huge kind of gains for the people there along with a, like a coalition of left parties. Um, but at the same time, it's not just that focus on uh, power within what remains a capitalist government. It's also, it's a power based on and um, with the ability to, to mobilize huge numbers of people. There are 250 million people on strike in India right now, farmers, workers, um, uh, students, uh, women's organizations. It's, it's incredible. Okay, now we, can, we can't talk about Karaya and India and the health COVID crisis without talking about the people's world and B. Lumpkin. 101 year old comrade uh, Anita, who wrote an article, 102? I think so. 102 yeah. year old, wrote an article, People's World on Karaya and the Communist Minister of Health, 
who has done such an outstanding job mm -hmm. on the on the health crisis. B I'm is just trying to get to 45, Anita. <laughs> yes, uh, 100, 102. B is just uh, an amazing. Uh, uh, she's an amazing writer, and and she's at meetings. You know, she's she's just a very active uh, participant in all of our struggles, and we're so lucky that she's uh, here with us. So. Speaking, speaking of cabinets and, and ministers, uh, Rosanna, I saw that uh, Mr. Barr, the attorney general has come out and said that the voting was legitimate, that he hasn't seen any cases of fraud. And uh, now Trump is gonna uh, get rid of him, maybe. Uh, uh, do, so do, do you think that we're at now at the end, Rosanna, of the uh, coup attempts by Trump to, to um, uh, overthrow the government, overthrow the election? I mean, they are the government, but I well, think Trump's yeah. going to stop. Well, probably Trump, but I don't think, you know, everybody, including Barr, isn't going to stop. They're just, they're just shifting. They're, you know, they're taking a different attitude or they're just, they're like, going to start, they're going to lay low for a little while and group, regroup. I think they're breaking away from Trump because they, they uh, you know, they just used him in some ways. Not that Trump was a, <clears throat> was not a user or, or, you know, anything like that, but, but um, they're, they're breaking away. They're just, they're just, they saw the sink, the ship, that ship is sinking. And so they're jumping ship and getting ready to, okay, so, you know, this one didn't work. Let's let's regroup and see what's gonna what's next. It's the all rats. strategic. The rats are jumping the ship. <clears throat> exactly. A bunch of goddamn rats. Every last yeah. one. But it doesn't mean okay. it's over. You know, no. it doesn't mean it's over. And I don't think Trump is going away. I think he's going to be uh, declaring that he's a candidate for 2024. The they say the week of the inauguration he's going <laughs> to make that declaration, and he's going to be a pain in the ass for the next four years. I'm sure. So well, if about, the media uh, doesn't cover him like they, you know, right. They've, they've sort of stopped doing that kind of mm -hmm. stuff. If they don't cover him, he won't get the kind of publicity that he has been. And hopefully, you know, we can get rid of him that way. They don't give him an audience anymore. They don't cover his stupid tweets. Cause it's just yeah. like, you know, it's done. Well, I don't think it's over, but that part is over. On top of lies, yeah, on top of, uh, on top of uh, a propaganda. Well, it's time for our uh, lightning round. Mm -hmm. And the lightning round is going to be on the topic of whether or not a stimulus bill is going to be passed before January the 1st. Yes or no? Scott? Um, something will be passed. Um, Will it be anything close to what's needed? No. So yes and no. Okay, uh, Michael, yes and no. Something tells me that uh, Mitch McConnell and them will do a Christmas gift for everyone and pass something. It may not, we may not feel it, but I think something's coming. So yeah, I would say yeah. Mm -hmm. Rosanna, yes and no. Two yeses. Yes, I think I, I agree. Something's coming. It's not going to be enough, obviously. You know, they have to placate the, the people. It's just, this is just ridiculous, you know, but they're not, you know, it's just, it's going to be crumbs com in comparison. Right. It would be maybe 300, not the 600. What do you think, Anita? I, I think it will be a, a past, and I think it will be like Rosanna said, a paltry uh, sum, maybe. Instead of the four trillion, I think that the Heroes Act was, or the three trillion. You know, they they they've been insisting maybe maybe five hundred billion or something like that. It's just not going to be adequate at all, and we're we're really looking at a, a difficult time in the economy in the next six months, definitely. So there are soup lines extending for miles all over the country. It's 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 uh, and and look out, people, because we're going to do a leaflet because we still need to organize the unemployed and the people who are suffering. We're going to do a leaflet text. What is that, Rosanna? Text 5565, five, unemployed to 5565, five, um, so that we can go to some of these food lines and, and, I don't remember. and let people know what what the heck is going on. Oh, nice. Uh, do, you, do, uh, do you have it, Michael? 
Yeah, 56525. Text unemployed to 56525. People need to be organized. We gotta push, we gotta fight, you know? Whatever happens is gonna be a result of people in the street, in the workplaces, on the campuses, fighting. It doesn't matter who is in the cabinet, you know? I mean, I hope that they're good people, but if McConnell does anything like he did to uh, uh, Obama, to uh, Mr. Biden and uh, Sister Harris, Vice President-elect Harris, it's gonna be uh, no holds barred, uh, complete opposition. We're not gonna give you a good goddamn thing. We're gonna fight you all the way down the road and try to make it impossible for you. And I think that that's what's gonna happen. Mm -hmm. so, remember the know, people still, the people, we have a lesson from the Obama years. Let's use that lesson to not allow this to happen a second time. And let's get, you know, continue to, to be a part of these social movements that are pushing for uh, rent relief and, uh, you know, stimulus package, all of those things. That's where our fight, you know, should take place. And that's the last word. Stay strong, stay safe, stay physically distant, but socially close and stay in the fight. We'll see you next week. Take care, everybody. Bye, everyone. Bye.